Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the comic book review series. And today I am going to be talking about issue one of Batman 89. So after many years of rumours and talks and at one point it actually had the plug pulled on it, we have now finally got a tie-in series to the Tim Burton Batman movies which featured Michael Keaton in the lead role of Batman slash Bruce Wayne from 1989 to 1992. And this comic book does get off to a slow start, I'm not going to lie, but it does get better. And at the same time, it's still very enjoyable. And this takes place months after Batman Returns, so you don't see anything weird or unusual, like, oh, why is the Joker back already, or why is this guy back here already? You know, as I said, this takes place roughly, I'm going to say maybe a year after Batman Returns, but still very enjoyable, lots of fun. You will get to see lots of things that we didn't get to see in the um, sadly never got made Batman forever movie that tim burton would have directed so you do get to see a lot of things in this series but as i said the drawings very well done the artwork's very slick and i like how they've based all of the likeness on all of the actors who appeared in the two batman movies just like superman 78 so we're going to start by taking a look at the first issue of batman 89 so as you can see awesome cover really captures the likeness and features of michael keaton as well as the bat suit as well so you did an excellent job there and i believe the artwork was done by ham quinones and ito so as you can see there their names so this looks like it's, it's set on halloween so there's definitely a reference to that. You know what I'm talking about. So um, there is Harvey Dent, who was played by Billy D. Williams. Now, to my understanding, if Tim Burton had directed a third Batman movie, we probably would have seen Billy D. Williams become Two-Faced because we never really got to see that. Harvey Dent was in the first Batman movie he was not in the second one although there was talks of him becoming two-face at the end of batman returns and then he will be two-face in the third movie none of that took place unfortunately so this miniseries is about as close as to what we're going to see over the course of the next few issues so there's harvey dents and just as i said it takes place on halloween there's some good stuff there and uh there's the uh, famous coin of harvey dance it's funny that um joker's gone but you still see his old gang running around causing trouble and there's uh batman 89 when you read and the dialogue and you see the pictures you can definitely hear the Danny Elfman score in your head you know but that's what it does for me like when I was reading this I could definitely hear the soundtrack from the two Batman movies epic as I said it's a bit of a slow start but I think this is just more establishing what's going to happen over the next few issues and there's the gang from the first Batman movie, Joker's Gang. And um, some more here. You can get to see Harvey Dent take some hits. You know, you even get to see him now some bad guys. I like the design for Bruce Wayne here. So this obviously must be a few years after because he's showing a bit of grey here. And, you know, I love the way they've made Bruce Wayne look exactly like Michael Keaton. And uh, there is Alfred, played wonderfully by the late great Michael Burr. Done a really good job here. Look, he's even got a moustache there as well. So that's quite cool. So he really looks like the traditional Alfred. 
So, um, just like in the animated series, we see Harvey Dent and Bruce Wayne as friends. Though, I wouldn't say they're like best friends like they were in the animated series. There's definitely respect there, but yeah, there's the relationship with Bruce Wayne and Harvey Dent. Now, um, I'm guessing, I don't think that's Vicky Vale, but I'm guessing that's supposed to be Summer Gleason, who was a character that was introduced in the animated series in the 90s. So, um, let's just... There's Barbara Gordon. As you can see there. There's Barbara Gordon. And in this universe, she's Sergeant Barbara Gordon. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Barbara Gordon in the police force, in Batman Beyond, she actually became Commissioner Barbara Gordon. So it makes sense, you know, if her dad's a cop, then she will join the police force. So they kind of continue that trend in this universe as well. So, um, you know, so we go here. So we see more of Harvey Dent. For most of this issue anyway, we are kind of seeing things from Harvey Dent. So they're more or less establishing Harvey Dent more in this universe. And as you can see, Batman is listening in on the conversation between both Harveys, Harvey Dent and Harvey Bullock. Harvey Bullock actually makes his debut in this universe because we never actually saw him in the Tim Burton Batman movies. So if we just get a little close-up shot there, there he is, right there. Yeah, we actually had a character named Eckhart, but he was more of a corrupt, sleazy, dirty cop working for Boss Grissom. And we saw him have a little altercation with Jack Napier, which led to him getting shot in Access Chemicals. So it's pretty cool that we're seeing Harvey Dent in this universe because me and my friend talked about this for quite a few years. Why did we never see Harvey Bullock in this universe? And um, here's Commissioner Gordon. Now, as we all know, uh, Commissioner Gordon was played by Pat Hingle, who sadly is no longer with us. But here he kind of looks like a, I don't know really, he looks like a chubby Gary Oldman look. Doesn't really look like Pat Hingle in this universe. And um, some cool action there. That is an amazing shot. Look at that. <laughs> that is an amazing shot. I like that. And uh, we see uh, you know, Mystery Vig Vigilante here. Hmm. So obviously, uh, this Mystery Vigilante has got some issues with Batman and he more or less disappears. But yeah, looks like it's a kid of sorts. And then we see Batman's cornered there. So that's pretty much it for issue one. As I said, issue one is pretty good. A bit slow, but enjoyable nonetheless. This is just more establishing, you know, the universe and picking up where we left off from the two Batman movies, Batman and Batman Returns. But this was mostly about Harvey Dent. We mainly got to see a lot of Harvey Dent in this issue. So it looks like they're well on their way to not only establishing Harvey Dent in this universe, but we're actually going to see him at some point become Two-Face. So should be a good one. And, you know, quite interesting to see how they'll pull this off, especially as we never got to see Billy D. Williams play Two-Face in Tim Burton's Batman movies. So I'm really good to see how they'll do this. So 
there you have it. Batman 89. Slow start, but it's a slow build. So I respect that. Doesn't mean it was boring. Just it was a little bit slow. But we'll see more as this series progresses. But off to a good solid start. Artwork is tremendous. Love the features that they based all the characters on the actors. You know, Bruce Wayne looking exactly like Michael Keaton, but just graying him up a little bit. You know, and um, Harvey Dent really looks just like Billy D. Williams. I think that's probably the best of the drawings. And also, Commissioner Gordon. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen them base it more on Pat Hingle, but fair enough. Michael Goff with, you know, basing Michael Goff for Alfred. Good stuff there. Even giving the moustache as well makes him look a little bit more like the classic Alfred from the 60s show, who was played by Alan Napier. So, good start, really. Very curious to see who that mystery vigilante was at the end. So, we'll see more about that. So, there you have it. Issue 1. Batman 89, and this is issue one of six. So that's going to be it for me. I am going to wrap this up now. What's your thoughts and opinions on the first issue of Batman 89? Did you enjoy it? Do you think it was a good start? And also, what's your thoughts and opinions on the design work for the characters, basing them off the actors? Do you think they've done a good job? And also, who do you think that mystery person was in the cape and mask at the end trying to take out batman do you think we'll learn more about who that person is you know what to do guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button leave your thoughts and comments down below and i will see all of you next time for another edition of the comic book review series so until next time take care everybody and stay safe and once again as always thanks for listening